this is Tim Pierce. That particular smile was because when I held the E note here, somehow the flesh from my finger triggered a high B harmonic. And I've tried to reproduce it, but can't. It's a one time, once in the universe, once in a lifetime event. I found a video by guitarist Tom Quayle where he talks about, let's just say, left hand freedom. And it really meshes with how I like to approach my left hand and keep it ready for action, keep it free, keep it floating without fatigue or tension. I also take just a quick look at the piece of music I wrote at the front of this and the way I approach it. It comes from my love of Leonard Skinner, Southern rock, country rock, even into Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Uh, that music is still very near and dear to me and in my DNA. If you want to support this channel, click the link below and take a look at the online masterclass. You should know about Tom Quayle. He has a great channel. And I found a video where he talks about a lazy index finger. I actually don't suffer from this, but it led me to another thing that I think is very important to talk about is that when your hand is moving on the neck, if you're using one finger, the other finger should be free to advance to their next goal or their next thing. I mean, while they're not being used, if you've you got your little finger planted somewhere, the next three fingers can be actually setting up for the next move. Now, whenever I teach something, I have to say to myself, is the opposite true? And in this case, I can say that, I can find it. The Tom Bukovac theory, the thing he teaches that when you play a chord, you have to keep that chord perfectly in place and go to the next chord, which is very different on your hands with no gap in between, which means you have to keep your fingers in the exact same position right until the very change, right until the very movement that you make, which is the opposite of what this says. Both are true. It depends on the situation. And uh, I always try and point out the opposite because it, the paradox of guitar is often when you espouse something, the opposite is also true. But what he's talking about here is the fact that I guess for a lot of people, when you do a, a, like a three note per string run, a lot of people leave their index finger planted. What I want you to do is to plant your finger down onto that fret and keep it down and then execute your hammer-ons and pull-offs, which is the more kind of traditional way of doing this. It's the way it's traditionally taught. Your first finger is an anchor point from which the other fingers derive their strength in order to do the hammer-ons and the pull-offs. Okay, I'm positing that this is actually a bad idea. This is gonna introduce tension into your hand and it's also gonna make you develop lazy first finger syndrome. So here it is with the finger planted down. What's hilarious about that is I can see my first finger knuckle joint wiggling because it desperately wants to release itself from the fret, or the string, I should say. Now, I feel way more tension through my hand when I'm doing that because I'm having to anchor this first finger down and then keep that as an anchor point to execute the other notes. I almost feel like on YouTube, it's better for me to show people like concepts that might be as simple as opening a door. You know what I'm saying? Uh, rather than like the Lydian scale or <laughs> the pentatonic box, you know, it's like, just don't press down so hard or move your fingers over here. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's just, it's more fun. And the concepts are kind of sometimes staring you right in the face and you go, oh, if I just relax, everything sounds better. Everything's easier. I have more energy. I love finding stuff like that. Now he starts to talk about how when you go from string to string, that's where it really matters. Because if you're holding the finger down, at the last minute, the last second, it has to do all that work at once and move to the next string. If I keep that first finger down at the very last second, just before I need this note, I have to quickly transition that first finger. I have to release it from the string, move it through the air, and then place it down on that fifth fret of the A string, which is the next note, the note D. However, if you release the first finger, two things happen. Now, you don't have to release it a long way, just release the pressure from the string. Now that first finger is in a kind of prone position, it's got potential energy that you can use and exploit to bring it down onto that fifth fret of the A string, in time, in control. That's the point. You're not suddenly switching to it. You're super, super in control over this movement. And the other thing is there's actually less tension in the hand. In this conversation, I want to take it a step further and say that any fingers you're not using while you're playing a note should be ready and can be already moving to the next destination. Now, this is a very similar thing to something I say all the time about muting is that any available fingers, the flesh from those fingers 
should be used to actually mute any adjacent strings and deaden strings you're not using. So it completely meshes with the way I approach muting and keeping stuff silent while you're while you're playing. So what I'm saying is your left hand should be floating on the fretboard and ready to move, but also the flesh from these fingers can be muting all the adjacent strings, which is really killing two birds with one stone. So for the pure pleasure of it, let's just listen to Tom play. He's a natural, a very humble human being and just a ferocious, beautiful guitar player. He also shares, he gives me permission to admit that I love a stereo modulated delay, this thing that surrounds us. <laughs> When we play, I do turn it off now and then, but I use it whenever I can. And it disappears. You don't hear it. You don't know it's there, but it's just like this thing that I need to inject. And it's it's wonderful. Stereo modulated delay. Just, just makes the guitar float a little bit. He loves it too. <laughs> Hey everybody, these folks are our local heroes and you can see why. They spend weeks putting this together and we are grateful for it. So Merry Christmas. I'm just gonna take two minutes and do a playover of that Leonard Skinner thing from the front. Uh, but the main message here, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and here's to a very good, very safe, healthy, happy, prosperous 2021. <laughs> So that's basically an E minor chord. It really benefits from being at the 12th fret and getting that nice shadow of the harmonics. Like its own reverb or its own kind of ghost by the original staff. Double stop pulled up. Basically tracing the A chord. Another double stop. I like about this steps out of time there's also a little bumped note there that just is it's just a lump it's a bump and a mistake sort of and okay to keep then I try to go to the opposite place up here and do a skinny high one and on purpose I'm trying to leave spaces so you hear the track just as much as you hear me or a little bit of the track In between the, you know, stabs. Going high on this guy. And double stops. Picked with these two fingers. And then I hold and wait and go. Something like that. It's like just triplets as fast as I can against the track. Let's hear that. Nothing more satisfying. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos. There's a 14 day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.